Sometimes in the corporate world, you've got to make tough decisions to make your business more lean. The same is true in Rise of Kingdoms. I've started this new test sleeper because I'm trying to strip out everything I don't need, anything that holds me back, uh, in the, especially in the first week, to make my account more efficient. And hopefully this will snowball into a much stronger account with less work. So the first thing I've done is I have made my peacekeepers redundant. So Lohar's on level one. I don't even have Boudicca or Bella. And Markswoman is on level one. I'll come back to Ethel Fledge. She's a little bit more special. But what have I done? I have made them redundant and I've contracted the work out to my farms. So let's have a look at my farms. We've got uh, a level 36 Boudicca and a level 14 Lohar. And I've put all the heads I can into them, so that's a nice strong march. And I'm now going to get the top tier prize from the fort. And I can just send this off running, put my phone down. Well, send two of them off running. Then I can put my phone down, do something else. And it's quite nice and relaxing way to get a bit more efficient um, experience points and those precious books for your account. So that's so those two are off on their way that's good that's two wins let's have a look at some of the rewards and why i do that so let's go to reports so what i'm interested in is of course the maximum tier 10 trophies um so that's 25,000 xp 20 uh, 200,000 or give or take in resources which does include gold which is in useful of course, you can sometimes get an extra 50 action points back, which is nice to save up, makes it even more efficient. And you get the Books of Covenant and you get the maximum reward, which is five, which is worth 50 gems. Also, it is an income of epic stars, which are quite hard to come by, except for, of course, well, most people get them from their silver keys, but they are quite hard to come by otherwise. So I've been doing, again, tier 10s non-stop on this account now i was hoping that i could get to the point where i can send three of these off and i will get to that point i'm at the point where i can send two off and forget about it but i will get to the point where i can send three off and i was hoping this was going to be more efficient than uh, amateur barb chaining but i've been doing my testing i've been testing you don't often see me barbarian chain but i've been testing barbarian chaining so here's a more of a classic, a 12, 11, a 12, or 11. Certainly an amateur can get four. Uh, there's four. Here we are. An 11, a 10, 11, a 10, 11, a 10. So there's six. So, you know, with practice, I know people can do better. It's quite hard early game when your march is so weak. And obviously I don't, I'm not using Loha. But I also uh, have been testing barbs in a barrel, which if you don't know, that's not when you summon more. That's more like, where is it? Barbs in a barrel. Here we go. That's where you just summon every single barbarian you possibly can and try and kill all 12. And certainly, during the Loha, this is just off the scale. Because you're getting to the point where it's less than 4 AP per barbarian. You're getting a Loha necklace. So, anyhow, this is what I found the in basis. So to 5 march, or at this stage in the game, to 3 march your barbarians is of course the worst thing you can do. But it does clear the action points quick. And I was doing that, I freely admit it. But I'm sometimes I'm low on time and that's just what I have to do. Especially when I was trying to get the 1.5 million. Solo forts, I would say, is twice as good as just clearing your AP onto barbarians. Uh, 5 marching them or 3 marching them. Now... But as soon as we move into low skill chaining, that's say killing 4 per 40 AP. Of course, if you then throw in low har with say an extra 30%, um, you obviously start to really move away. Almost You're already almost twice as efficient as doing solo forts. But you have had to spend a lot to get low har, um, low har's skills up. You've had to spend a lot of 140 APs to get that up. You've also have to spend. Um, you're also using Lohar, especially if you're using him to chain. Where I've thought to myself, I don't use him in open field. I don't use him in sunset 
Canyon. He is an option in Sunset Canyon, but he's really very, very weak. Um, so I just don't want him. I'm just going to cut him out and see what happens. I think I will miss him. Uh, eventually, he, as I get Alliance rewards, his skills will go up, and, and maybe I will, maybe I will start to use him. But I will want to get those low har heads for free from other people running low hars, and I just collecting the Alliance gift like I was doing on my stream. So maybe I'll use him later, but for the moment, he's getting nothing. Not even 100 XP. Everything is going into the front line of my Sunset Canyon team, or a secondary commander like um, Joan, uh, who, of course, I want to maybe get some of the later skills as well. Um, so I'm on a 40, a 35 and a 31. I've only got three marches at the moment, so my Sunset team's getting its ass kicked. But don't worry about that. With a sleeper account, you've got to keep your um, eye on the prize, which is how strong my Sunset Arena team's going to be in 20 days' time. Let's have a little look. So that's what I'm doing there. So remember, uh, making this possible is using the versatility talent and the insight which is reduce action points cost to 10 so that's certainly helping with running um uh, running forts it's saving me 10 if i do kill barbarians it's saving me 10 but i'm not getting the bonuses but at least the xp's all going on a commander that i want so for example if i had loha and city keeper i'm only i don't want the xp on loha so although he's getting uh, half the XP of the barbarian kill, uh, I don't want I don't want to use it on him. So if both the commanders are both part of my Sunset Canyon front line, then that's more efficient. Obviously, once you get to Lohar to seventy percent, and then his talent for the extra fifteen percent, it almost doesn't matter. But that's a huge amount of AP and running Lohar to get him to that stage. So I'm just going to try and wipe it out and see what happens. The next thing I'm working on is... Um, I've not been using any of my resources. I've been really strict with myself and using farms. And just passing tons of resources over. And it is starting to build up. It's not brilliant. I don't seem to have much gold. But it is starting to build up. Certainly, that's 10 million. Um, that's... That's 11 million. That's 17 million. Is that 17 million? Yeah, that's 17 million, 3 million there. So it is starting to build up. And I'm hoping day 20, what keeps happening to me is day 20, I go to my new kingdom. Uh, I've got two farms stacked of Loha waiting for me. And I absolutely destroy those farms because I'm so desperate for resources by day 20. Um, that I ruin those farms and that causes me problems in the long run. So I'm trying to have my um, absolutely stacked with resources so that doesn't happen, I am hoping. I've also tried something else new, which is a bit insane, is I am... Oh no, I can't show you. I've not done any development uh, research after... Um, getting the gold mines and the ones obviously you get free from clearing the map so the reason I'm putting into this is I, keep, I was doing um, mathematics and engineering and then uh, I'd get to say I don't know City Hall 24 or something and it, it didn't really matter so let's have a look here so I can't do that building let's say let's find something uh, here we are, this farm. So, this farm's going to take 7 hours and 10, 10 minutes. Let's say it was 70 hours and 10, and 10 hours. Let's say it was a much higher level. <coughs> and let's say I didn't have the resources to start it. So, it just becomes academic how long it takes on the time. The, if it's going to take me 7 days to save up the resources to start it, it doesn't matter whether it's 63 days or 70 days. If I haven't got the resources to start it, it's not starting. And then I just go off at a tangent and I'll, do, I'll, I don't know, increase this gold mine or I'll do something whilst I'm waiting to save up the resources. But then I never seem to save up the resources because I haven't got my farming sorted. So I think it's, I'm starting to feel it's just academic 
how long something takes sometimes. If because if you eventually always run out of resources, um, it, it's academic how long the next building takes to to build. If you've got no resources to start it, you're losing time anyhow. So that's my thinking there. It might not work. It might be ridiculous. And eventually, obviously, later in the game, once I'm level 25, I will start to do development. But up until then, I'm just going to ignore it and see how that plays out. I'm also going to have all those extra resources that I would have spent on engineering and mathematics, which is a lot of resources and a lot of speed ups. And I'm going to have those for military technology. So hopefully it will help me in expedition. Now, I haven't gone for the 1.5 million on this account. I have achieved the 600k, which I'm pretty happy about. I'm not going to get to the million, unfortunately. I can't get into the top alliance, which is annoying. Let's just check this is okay. There we are. You've got a strong Boudicca. You're no problem at all. Yeah, that's a nice win. So, I'm not going for the 1 million. Um, but I say, I'm just trying to make this account a stronger base to start on. And if I can do some good things this early, I'm hoping they're going to snowball later to a much stronger Sunset Canyon team and a much better resources um, a resources situation. I was worried that not rushing the 1.5 million or not rushing troops was going to affect my expedition, but I'm pretty happy to be on 35 after a week. Um, and I've done the extras. I'm, of course, at the moment, I'm all power getting... Ethelfled to 5111 and but Ethelfled of course is going to be interesting I do I do intend to actually use her as a main march on uh, when I get Richard I want her to be in my Sunset Canyon team as a main march I know I have been putting her with Sun Tzu and for open field fighting she will stay with Sun Tzu but for Sunset Canyon and especially if I am going to try and do a bit of chaining, um, I'm going to use her because she's going to obviously. I might make her a peacekeeper until she is level 50, then convert her. Because I really want to try. I think she's going to go brilliant with Richard as a 8, sorry, 9% extra healing there, extra 9% to attack when you've been healed. This is an extra 30%. Rage, which is an extra 30% healing. There, of course, is another 9% taking it to 18% extra healing. And, of course, that extra 3% troops. And, of course, Richard is quite good. Uh, I always thought he was... I thought he had some sort of infantry buff, but he doesn't. It's just a re basic reduced damage. Can we see him? Richard, Richard, Richard. There we are. I thought for some reason that one of these was an infantry skill, but they're not. It's just a reduced damage, so that goes well with a leadership commander. And the counter-attack counter damage bonus, brilliant. That goes well again with a leadership commander. So I think I'm going to go for Ethelfled Richard, but that's a little later in the game. Let's see how that works out. Now, I have still got my other account. It will eventually be going into Sunset Canyon. But I have um, stepped back from the kingdom. Uh, I've not been getting top five in Sunset or anything like that. I've just been farming on the account. And I will go into Sun into KVK when they start. But then, of course, I will go AFK and loop that account, I hope, to join this account at some point in the future. And that will take its place at my side. Oh, here's the other, the other one going. Let's have a look at that. Boom. Yeah, that's a nice win. Brilliant. So well done, Boudicca. Well done, my farms. This is what I'm trying. And I say, just trying to be more efficient, early game, take it to the next stage and just cut out what I wasn't using anyhow. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.